Okay, so today is the day that I finally demonstrate not only consumer medium format video, but also how I make videos in general. So we're going to be satisfying two crowds here. I will also preface that this is one of two medium format video videos that I plan on making. The other one using a gimbal hopefully out and about, and this one is of me trying it all out just for kicks. So let's dive right in and start with the gear that I use. And for this video, I'll be using my Hasselblad 500CM with the CFV2 digital back. This utilizes a sensor and software that is near identical to the Hasselblad X1D. Now let's just quickly go over what I mean by medium format. The Hasselblad suits a 6x6 square format on film that is monstrously big. A sensor anywhere close to this size would run you about 20 to 40 grand. But even this slightly smaller consumer grade sensor will give us what we want. A shallower effective depth of field, high dynamic range, and a fabulous resolution. So here we have the Sony A7S. This is a 12 megapixel full frame sensor, which is at the same frame size as 35 millimeter film. And this is the Crop 645 medium format sensor, which is about two times larger than full frame. And of course, I apologize for the crappy Android footage. I realized I did not actually have enough cameras to show these two sensors off. Now, since this sensor is slightly smaller than what the Hasselblad normally shoots, to help with the field of view, we'll be using a wider angle lens. This one is the Carl Zeiss Distagon 50mm f4. It's also the closest focusing lens of any of the Hasselblad V system. But if that isn't enough, the 80mm on the right there, paired with an extension tube, should do just fine. When using the video feature on the CFV, the entire camera is open front to back. This is what gets us into live view. The shutter is locked on F or bulb mode depending on your lens. The mirror is up and the rear auxiliary doors are open. Therefore, we don't need that big bulky viewfinder, so we're going to be switching that out for the waist level finder. In two previous instances, I've done videos on how to use this camera system with the digital back, so if you want to know more information on that, you can go back and check those out. The second one of those videos was rather unliked, strangely enough, which is odd because I thought it was kind of fun. Anyway, the Hasselblad was never meant to shoot video, and this feature was even removed during the release of the X2D just this week. However, the video industry as a whole has been steadily moving towards larger and larger sensors, and large sensors cost large amounts of money. A system like this could very well be utilized as sort of a budget large sensor for cinematography, and I use the word budget very sparingly because this is not a cheap setup. So let's start by powering on the camera and making sure that everything is ready to shoot. First thing is to select video mode and then we go into live shooting mode. From there we can lock the shutter open using the little lever that's surrounding the shutter button. After that we will work with exposure. We can use the two buttons on the bottom of the screen to adjust frame rate or we can use the aperture ring on the lens which should automatically be stopped down as you rotate it because we have locked that open. Now, for all of my shots, I'm just looking to see what interests me. I try to minimize super high contrast because then I begin to lose details here and there, but because I don't light my video scenes, it can be very difficult to control everything to be consistent shot to shot. Changing lenses is also a little bit tricky. You need to close the shutter, wind the camera, and then place your lens on and lock it open all over again. The other piece of the puzzle is audio. You're going to need a capture device. The one I have is a Nagra IS from the late 1970s, but it does deliver 40 volt phantom power through to the mic, which is nice. I can use my XLR microphone and plug the output directly into the camera or record the audio to tape separately. The tape sounds great. Nights in white satin. Underneath the camera is a rubber flap. This hides microphone and headphone ports as well as a flash port. Today I'm going to plug the audio source directly into the camera. Unfortunately, I did forget to set the level input in the camera, which is found under settings, video, and audio, and my signal was too hot, so I had to go back and record that audio separately. I do do a lot of panning shots in these videos, which is super hard without the pan handle. It takes a lot of focus to make things as smooth as possible, but with such a large sensor, no image stabilization, rolling shutter issues, and a really heavy camera, the visual defects make it through to the final shot. The other tricky part is focus pulling. These manual focus lenses are designed for still shooting only and are ridiculously tight and rigid to move, and this also causes a ton of camera shake to make it through to the final shots. So at the end of the day, can I really recommend this for video work? 
No, absolutely not, but it is kind of fun to work with.